Introducing the 2025 BMW i3 Hybrid. With 150 miles of electric-only range, the i3 Hybrid has the longest electric range of any hybrid on the market. So much range, you may never need to use the gas engine at all. But it's there for you when you need it. Visit your local BMW dealer for a test drive and to explore purchase and lease options. Confused? Intrigued? Well, I guess we gotta talk about that right now. Hi, this is Rich from Wings, Wheels, and Wires. And for anyone who didn't figure it out, no, that commercial was not real. But if it was, it would actually probably sell more cars than the i3 EV would. Why is that? Well, we'll talk about the i3 in a minute. But first, we need to talk about the current market. You see, EV sales have continued to grow in 2024, but not as much as in past years. Now, this doesn't mean that a bunch of people are going back to internal combustion engine or ICE cars, gas cars as most folks know them. It's actually because more and more people are buying hybrids. There are a few reasons for this. Uh, very first one being availability of charging. Now, sometimes this is a valid concern and sometimes it's not. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter whether it's a valid concern or not, because what really matters is what the person believes, because that's going to drive their buying decisions. The same thing goes for charging. In this video, I explain how most people probably spend more time putting gas in their car than they would charging their vehicle. But unfortunately, all anyone ever focuses on is how many hours am I going to spend charging during road trips. Also, there is the range issue. Most people believe that they will need at least 300 miles of range for an EV to even be a consideration for them. Even though in reality, most people only drive about 30 miles per day. So an EV on a single charge could easily last 10 days. Many people see hybrids as a solution to this problem. Once you run out of electric range, you can run on gas. And on road trips, filling up your tank takes minutes, not hours, as it would with electricity. So the ever infamous range anxiety is not even a consideration. But there are some problems with this belief, which we will talk about right after this. If you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button down below. While you're down there, hitting the subscribe button would greatly support the channel. And, of course, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And stand by to the end of the video to hear my new subscriber shoutouts. The first problem is that hybrids have very short electric-only range, usually somewhere only around about 20 miles and sometimes even less. Now, the solution to this is the more modern hybrids, which are plug-in hybrids. These are hybrids that have a much larger battery, and you plug them in like you would an electric vehicle and they usually have longer ranges and when they run out then you drive them much like a traditional hybrid. These usually have somewhere in the area of 40 miles of range or more, which is more than most people's average daily commute of only 30 miles. So I titled this video why we need an i3 and the subject of this video is not me lamenting the loss of the i3, though if you do want to see that I do a lot of that in this video. No, this is talking about one very specific feature of the i3 that really seems like we should have around a lot more, which is the range extender, or REX. You see, as an EV, the i3 had very short range. My version has 115 miles, as a matter of fact. And the range extender was added as sort of a backup plan. The problem is, for most people who really were dedicated to getting EVs, this seemed like kind of a cop-out, and most of them opted for an equally priced or even cheaper fully electric vehicle that just had more range. But now let's think of the i3 in terms of being a hybrid, like I did in the commercial. You see, as an EV, the i3 Rex had terrible range, but as a hybrid, it has the best range on the market, which makes it a great option. So you may be thinking, well, what makes the i3 different? We see all other hybrids have a full gas drive system with a gas tank and everything, and a full electric tank with battery and everything. And so you're carrying the weight of two complete drive systems around. Now, at highway speeds, your electric drive system and battery are practically useless. 
Likewise, when you're driving in stop-and-go traffic or city driving, your gas drive system is almost never used because you're driving electric, especially in the case of plug-in hybrids. What makes the i3 different is that it is a serial hybrid. What that means is that the gas motor, when it's running, doesn't actually power the wheels at all. It actually only charges the battery and then the battery powers the electric motor. Think of it as having an onboard gas generator. See, the benefit of this is that there is no demand on the engine to actually produce enough power to move the vehicle. See, even the smallest engine in a normal hybrid is still at least a four-cylinder engine, right? Whereas the engine in a Rex is actually only a scooter engine. It's a notably smaller and lighter engine, which puts less weight to carry around. Also, the i3 had a much smaller gas tank of only 1.9 gallons, which also reduces the weight significantly. So while you are still driving, carrying around a gas tank and an engine, it is a much smaller and lighter gas tank and engine. Now, to be fair, there is one major drawback to a serial hybrid system, and that is converting gas power to electric, to the battery, back to the electric engine, does come at an efficiency decrease. While using the Rex, for example, the i3 only gets about 30 miles per gallon, which is worse than a lot of economy cars. The upside of this is with the long range of the battery, you rarely have to use it. Myself, I average about 60 miles a year running the Rex. So I honestly barely ever need to actually utilize the gas engine at all. So its efficiency really isn't that big a deal. So I do not expect BMW to return to making the i3 just so they put the Rex in it and market it as a hybrid. But this serial hybrid technology is something other companies can take advantage of, right? What you can do is you can take a crossover SUV, say a Juke or even like a RAV4, you can put a BMW i3 size, physically sized pack in it uh, with today's better battery technology. We can push it up between 150, say even 200. Then you can couple it with a more efficient gas motor and a four gallon gas tank instead of the 1.9 gallon. So we can get 120 miles of range. Now your combined range can say be around 300 or 320, which is going to meet most people's needs. And because the batteries are such a big part of the cost of an EV, the smaller battery will make production cheaper. The smaller engine will make the production of the gas portion of the vehicle cheaper as well because you don't have all the other things like the large coolant system and everything like that. The i3's Rex is air cooled. So you're able to cut down a lot of weight. You're able to cut down a lot of prices, costs of related to building this. And as a result, you can actually make this thing very competitively priced, at least equal to what a regular hybrid costs, definitely a lot cheaper than what a BMW i3 costs or even most electric vehicles in their same class. Now, something like this had been tried before. Mazda tried it with this vehicle, but unfortunately, they still priced it at $35,000. Starting, by the way, I think the Rex version was even more. So, no, you want to price this thing starting at about 22, 23, 24. And then what you would do is market it to the people who want to buy hybrids. Now, understand, this vehicle is nowhere as good as buying just a fully electric vehicle. But for the people who have just a little apprehension and can't quite take that final leap into buying an electric vehicle, this is a great way to segue into it. First off, because they will almost all the time simply be driving it as an electric vehicle without knowing it. And then secondly, because after owning one of these for a few years and going, gee, you know, the Rex is only run like every six months. And that's because it has to for its maintenance cycle, not because I needed to drive on it. They might go, you know, how about, obviously I don't need the gas, right? Maybe I can just go ahead and buy an EV. So besides being a better product as far as um, efficiency and moving people towards electrification, it also is a better product as an advertisement for a fully electric vehicle. So tell me, what do you think? Do you think we need more serial hybrids to maybe remove some of the plug-in hybrids we currently have on the market? Or do you think this is a terrible idea? Also, do you like my little commercial at the beginning? 
don't forget to like, subscribe. Um, don't forget to stick around for the end so you can hear my subscriber shout out. And here's a video YouTube thinks you're going to like. And now it's time for the subscriber shout outs. If you'd like your own shout out, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and either make sure your name is visible or put in the comments down below that you subscribed. Volte Nulo, Johnny13, Daner Salesmora. Thank you and have a great day.